Hi there students and welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Channel. I'm Crystal Mardukanes, nurse educator teaching fundamentals of nursing practice. If you have any question or if you want to clarify some gray areas with regard to our topic today, please comment down below. I'll be glad to read your comments and answer your questions. Also, if you want to suggest any topic or content for our next videos, please write them below. And if you find this YouTube channel useful, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to keep you updated for new video uploads. Please do not forget to check the description below for additional inputs and some clarifications with regard to this lecture video. So our topic today is about drugs to dosage calculations and conversion. So we have formula for computation of dosage. We have oral medications, the solid form, oral or parenteral medications, liquid form, IV fluid rate, conversion of temperature, lastly we have pediatric doses. Okay. But before we proceed to the different formula that we have, so let us understand first what is desired dose or desired dosage. So it is the ordered dose of the physician or order, ordered dosage of the physician. So this means this is the dose that our patient need. Okay. We also have stock strength or dose. It is the amount of drug present in the preparation, may it be tablet or liquid form. Okay. So you can find your stock strength and dose in your drug label. So here we have an example of your drug label. So we have here augmentin. So 125 milligrams per 5 ml, that is your stock dose or your, that is your uh, stock strength. Okay. We also have here thoracin, 25 milligrams per ml. So meaning in every 1 ml, there is 25 milligrams of thoracin. Okay. We also have here phenobarbital tablets, 15 milligrams. So meaning in every tablet, there is a 15 milligrams of phenobarbital. Okay. We also have here 200 milligrams per ml of amoxicillin for oral suspension. Okay. So meaning in every 5 ml, there is 20, uh, 200 milligrams of amoxicillin. Okay. So... That is your stock dose or your stock strength. We also have your stock volume. Okay, it is the amount of the solution where the drug is diluted. Okay, for example, in your antibiotics, okay, intravenous antibiotics. So it is in a powdered form. Okay, so before you use that medication, you have to dilute. Uh, sterile water or normal saline solution to that powdered form so that it would become a liquid form okay so that it could be administered through uh, through intravenous okay injection so the amount of fluid or solution that you injected to that powdered medication is the stock volume okay we also have here formulas for oral medications that are solid, okay? So we have here the desired dose, okay? That is the order of the physician that the patient should receive, okay? Over the stock dose or the stock strength equals the quantity of drug. So the quantity of drug means it is the, the amount of drug that you will administer to the patient it could be capsule it could be tablet okay amount of capsule amount of tablet so it is simply abbreviated as d over s equals q okay we also have your oral or parenteral medications in liquid forms okay so we have the desired dose over the stock dose times the dilution dilution can be also termed as stock volume okay equals quantity of drug okay d over s times dilution equals quantity in a simpler form okay 
We also have here IV fluid rates. So we have three ways or we have three formula that we use. So if you want to compute for drops per minute, which is in letter A, GTTS means drops. Okay, Drops per minute equals volume in CC times drop factor over number of hours times 60 minutes. Okay, that is your formula for drops per minute. However, if you want to determine the CC per hour, your, formu your formula is volume in CC over number of hours. Okay, so that is one of the formulas you use to compute for CC per hour. We also use drops per minute times 4. But we commonly use the formula volume in CC divided by number of hours. Okay? Letter C, we have duration in hours. If you want to determine the number of hours it will take for an IV fluid to be consumed, okay? So we use volume in CC over CC per hour. Okay? So you expect that the result for the duration of uh, in hours is hours also, okay? So I have here intravenous fluid. This is your intravenous fluid. And we also have your drip chamber here, okay? So in your drops per minute, you have to determine this first before you regulate your drip chamber, okay? So in your drip chamber, you have to determine how many drops, okay? You have to count the number of drops per minute. Okay, when you regulate your IV of your patient. Okay, so that is the purpose why you need to compute for the drops per minute of your IV fluid. We also have conversion of temperature. We have two methods. Converting degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit equals degrees Celsius times 1.8 plus 32 okay also we can convert degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius that is degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 then you multiply it by 0.55 okay so remember those two important formula on how to convert your temperature we also have pediatric doses Okay, so we have three methods on how to, to convert pediatric doses. So we could use the Clark's rule, the Fried's rule, and the Young's rule. Okay, so the question is, what uh, method are we, using, are, are we going to use? Okay, so the answer is it depends on the given. Okay, so if the situation gives you weight, Okay. It could either be in pounds or in kilograms, so you will use Clark's rule. In the event that the situation or the problem ask you, uh, gives you, I mean gives you the age in month of the child, so you use the Fried's rule. Okay. In the event that the situation or the problem gives you age in years, so you will use Young's rule. Okay. So the purpose of computing or calculating your pediatric doses is to determine the safe dose for your child, okay? So we have here equivalent, so very important that we need to know uh, the equivalent of a particular unit of measurement to ml or to, uh, to liters, okay, or kilograms or pounds. So we have here common household measurements. We also have apothecary measurement, metric measurements, and other important unit measurements. So I'll just mention the most commonly used uh, household measurements. So here, we usually use in the hospital cup. So one cup is equivalent to 8 ounces. One tablespoon is equivalent to 15 ml. 1 teaspoon is equivalent to 4 to 5 ml. So usually we use 5 ml. 
note that 1 ounce is equivalent to 30 ml or cc okay ml and cc is the same okay your milliliters and cubic centimeters in the hospital we use we sometimes use cc okay we can also use ml okay but it's still the same we also have here apothecary measurement so we usually use uh we seldom use actually this type of measurement okay we no longer see this uh these measurements in the hospital we also have your metric measurement okay so ml to liters okay so 1 ml is equivalent to 0 0.001 liter 1 deciliter is 10 equivalent to 10 liter okay we also have your units for of weight okay one uh 1 kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams, okay? Units of length, so we have here 1 hectometer is equivalent to 100 meter, okay? 1 centimeter is equivalent to 0 0.01 meter. We also have here other important unit of measurements or equivalents. So 1 gram is equivalent to 15 grains, okay? One grain is equivalent to 60 milligrams, okay? One kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds, okay? What else? One ounce is equivalent to 30 grams, 30 ml, or 30 cc, okay? It's the same. One liter is equivalent to 1,000 ml. One ml is equivalent to 15 drops, or 1 cc or 60 micro drops or 1 gram okay so those are the most commonly used unit of measurements so I have here a summary of those uh, things that I have mentioned earlier so you can check this out